Hello and welcome to part three of my beginner's guide to the Go Press and Foil. Now previously we've uh, looked at how to just put hot foil stamps onto the Go Press, make sure it's switched on, make sure it's hot enough, load the foil and foil some card and to make sure you've got the right amount of pressure so that your foiling comes out correctly foiled with no missing bits and no bits foiled um, that we don't want foiled. So moving on from that I then had a look at how we could actually get better control over the positioning of hot foil stamps and I used a, a stamp press magnet, a neodymium magnet to help me position the hot foil stamps to determine the position and then foil with them. And that was the last one I did in part the video, that's part two. Um, and I, I foiled it in the video, but I've since coloured it in and I thought people might want to see that. So there we are. And I've got some toppers from a hunky dory card kit that I've then foiled my own sentiments onto. Okay, so that was what we did in part two. That one wasn't pre-printed, but I didn't want to waste lots of card. So that let me just have a piece of card, just a tiny bit bigger than I was going to die cut. And then I could foil it and die cut it without wasting card. Another hunky dory one. And we saw if you're working with things like ovals to, I, I cut this out and, and left, left it in the waist and just put some tape on the back. So I've got a straight test to line up with. So that's what I did in the previous video. Um, and then I wanted to move on to looking at doing more with sort of pre-made toppers. Now, this has been a bit of a journey of discovery today because this is lovely card, but actually it's not very easy to foil. Um, so I did some experiments this morning and ended up with some good examples of what not to do. So one of the things I realised is because I'm videoing, I've actually been rushing what I was doing and I wasn't allowing enough time. So when we do this kind of foiling or this kind of foiling using the, this is done with the, using the Couture Creations cut foil and embossed dies. We need to use a metal plate. Now, this, if you look carefully here, I can get the camera to focus on it. There we are. It's the Couture Creations metal conversion plate. Okay, it's really quite thick. Yeah, very sturdy. And for some die cutting machines, um that works great but my die cutting machine is a says it's big shop it, it's not had an awful lot of use it's quite tight and i actually find that this gives a bit too much pressure for me so i don't use that but if you've got one by all means try it just don't force things through your die cutting machine there are alternatives okay so let me put that to one side Okay, so what I do, this is looking quite bent now, but I've got a thin metal shim. Yeah, it's not sturdy, I can flex it. Um, it's looking a bit crumpled as well. Uh, this is the sort of die cutting shim you use if you're cutting fabric in your die cutting machine or a very intricate die that you need extra pressure with. Um, or even mixed media dies to protect your plates from them. So I use one of those because that's very thin. I then put two pieces of 300 GSM card underneath it. Okay. And that all goes on the hot plate. So let me put that on to warm up. So my, my two card shims, yeah, my two card shims, get them all get them nice and level. And I've cut those so they fit inside the black heated area. And I'm just going to put my 
metal plate on there. Now it's a bit bent, it tends to stop my lid from closing properly. It's, it's not that it's too thick, it's just that it's bent. So I'm just going to close that up and to make sure it stays in contact, gets properly heated. Quite often I hold the lid closed. Um, but because I'm videoing and I need to be doing other things, I've got one of my die storage folders. I'm just going to rest that on my lid. So that will just hold that closed for me. Okay, so. Earlier, I looked at using the Contour Creations cut foil and embossed dies. And I did this. And let me show you those dies. They come in a number of sets. So this is the, the oval set. It goes from really, these are really big. So that's, yeah, that go nicely on an A5 card. Um, in fact, I don't think I've ever used the biggest one. Um, or right down to the small ones. And I think it was that, yes, it's that size that I've used on that one. Okay. So they make cutting out and having that thin line around the edge foiled. I'm just going to try and get the camera to focus on that for you. There we are. Yeah, lovely thin line foiled around the edge. And that's great. They come in lots of sizes and lots of different shapes. I've got the bracket frames as well. Um, now, these ones are, are black because I'm a member of the Couture Creation Design team and they gave us a, an early release of these so we could play with them. But normally when you buy them, they'll be, they'll be nice shiny ones. Um, but that's what I've got to use. And then they, so those are the, the kind of plain ones. They do ones that have a thicker line as well in sort of ovals and rectangles and scalloped ovals and rectangles and squares and hearts, I think. And then they also do this kind that have a, a fancy border. But these aren't so useful for working with, with pre-printed toppers because they, they tend to never be the size you want. Okay, so let's first of all work with one of these and cut this out. So let me do that to begin with. I just buried my die. Here. Okay, so picking a die that fits. This is pre, these are pre-cut, so it needs to fit inside the cut line. So I could do something like that. Turn this round. So I can do something like that, or something like that. Okay, perhaps I'll do this one. So I'm going to pop it out to make it easier to work with. And then I need some foil. Is that piece bigger? No. Uh, no, that piece is too small. That piece will do. Right. So I have a piece of foil. And I'm going to put my die down on it. And I'm going to trim around the die and trim away the inside. And that's so that I don't get any foil spoiling my nice sentiment. I'm just going to come around the edge. I've got a cutting mat that I keep specially for doing this. Up, so I only cut foil on it. So whilst you can see a few marks, they're just sort of where foil has rubbed off onto the surface. There's no actual, actual cut lines in it from cutting card. Or fabric. Just need this roughly around the outside. And the only reason for trimming around the outside is because it makes it easier to tape everything in place. So 
especially at the corners. Okay, so that's the outside and I do normally do the outside before I do the inside. Just a few bits there, I'm just going to nip those off. Okay, and then I'm going to take out the inside. So a few millimetres from the edge of the die. We'll just come. If you really don't want to use a craft knife and it is easier than it looks or than you imagine then you could draw around the inside with an alcohol marker and make a hole in the middle and then cut the rest with some scissors but then you won't end up with a piece of foil intact to, to be able to use in the from the middle Half bit. Okay, so I'm just going to put the die to one side and put my knife away. Now, if it's still attached in one or two places, if you just just tug gently, it will just come away. There we are. So then I'll take my tag Now this needs to go, this has a cutting edge on the outside so it needs to go cutting edge down So smooth side up and Then I just need to make sure it's in my foil are positioned where I need them on my card And If I have trouble Getting the foil to, to, to move a little bit, you just lick your finger or damp it on a sponge. Then uh, you'll find that you can just, it'll just grip the foil for you. There we are, that can go there. Then I need some low tack tape to hold it down. I use a uh, frog, um, the decorator's masking tape for delicate surfaces. just need to tape it in a couple of places just at the edge so I've taped it like with die cutting you always try to tape to your waist so I've taped outside that's not focusing let's have another go there we are okay so that's ready to go onto the go press and foil Here it is, it's nice and warm. And I've also got here another thin metal shim. This is a very, very thin one. Um, it's getting quite battered. Um, but some like Couture Creations, because lids were getting scratched, and it's okay for them to get scratched, don't get me wrong, but people were didn't really want to get them scratched. Um, rather than putting a second metal shim down to add thickness, they came up with the idea of sandwiching what you're doing in between two metal shims um, and that way you get the pressure um, but it also protects the lid from being scratched so I'm going to put that down and again because they're bent it tends to push the lid up but it's not that it's too thick except it's too far back that's it, let's give that the hinge a, give the hinge a bit more space That's it. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, so having put the dye on there, that needs to warm up thoroughly. So I'm going to put that back on the base. And quite often I'll just sit and hold it closed. But this is the thing, because I'm videoing, I didn't do that earlier. And nothing worked, basically. Um, so I don't want to sit here holding it. So I'm going to put my dies back on top of it. There we are. And that needs, that's gone green, but I'm actually going to leave it until it's gone back to red and back to green before I roll it. Okay, so while that's brewing, let's go back to these. So that's my sheet that I'm taking that out of. So what I was trying to look at this morning is oh, earlier when I was working things out was I wanted to put a foiled edge around here okay now again if you if you've got the rectangular cut foil and embossed dies they will do it for you and put a thin line and then cut the edge sometimes you want a thicker line but sometimes you don't want to cut it out um, so and sometimes you just want something different to what Couture Creations do. Um, I've got a folder, a big folder, full of nesting sets of dies. And I use all of them from time to time. And I might want to cut a topper out and have a backing piece that's foiled. These are some I did. Well, this was another of the pre-cut ones. And I've forward the edge of that and cut it out but I've used a normal cutting die okay and for this one I've used that so in a minute I'm going to show you how to do that but just to say that the bigger you get the harder it is to get completed foiling and the more important it is not to rush so Let's move this to one side because that has gone green again. Let's take my dye storage off the top. Let's turn, turn the camera around so you can see what I'm doing. Oops, too far. There we are. Okay, so I'm just going to squeeze this together and pull it off the top. And then roll it through my die cutting machine. Now, don't worry about the cracking, it's a die cutting. Okay, I'm just going to go again. Just slid the go press back into the base. I always do that so it stays warm. I'm just going to take my top metal shim off and put it to one side. Okay, and then I can get this out. And then put this back on the base. And again, to make sure all of that metal shim stays nice and warm, I'm going to put my dye storage back on the top. Right, so let's see if this has worked. So I'm going to pop this out. Okay, and then if I just wiggle it a bit, the foil kind of loosens. Or I can get a nail under the edge, there we are. there that has given me a lovely fold line around the edge okay so I've done that and then if I want 
something to mount that on to, to give it a mat. I could use a bigger size and use some of the um, pattern paper that comes with the set. So I'm just using um, a card kit that I've had in my stash for ages. I tend not to work with kits very much. I think it was a free giveaway. So I've had it ages. Um, so don't ask me where you can get it because you probably can't now. Um, and as I say, as paper and card go, it hasn't proved the easiest in the world to foil. Uh, and some doesn't. Um, I'll show you some more of my, my, you know, this is a fairly epic failure on my part this morning. Um, it, it just didn't want to be foiled. And you, you get some cardstock like that. And well, some, sometimes it will work with a different foil. And um, it really is quite difficult to, to say this will work, that won't. Because um, it varies. So in this kit, I have got, and I have used some already. I've, this is one of the papers. So I could take a section of this and do the larger version of this and then use it as a, a layer for it. Or I can use one of the, these aren't cut out but they're pre-printed and put a larger one on here. I was going to do a rectangle but I could have done with giving that a bit longer. I'm going to come back to that. Okay, so I've done the oval there. Um, but as I say, you can also use normal cutting dies. So let me show you what to do. Let's do something very similar, but using a normal cutting die. So let's do sending you a little sunshine. Shall we, or shall I do oh, Joyce now? Happy birthday to you. Yeah, let me do happy birthday to you. It's in the same colours. Okay, so I've got a grab my dies a set of nesting ovals they're plain dies lots in the set yeah just normal dies if you look at it let me see if i can get that to focus no focus there for me let me my hand up here get something get something behind it hang on a second let me get a piece of card Right, I put to do that. So it's got the only that's it's the only thing in that the camera can see now. So you can see I've got the cutting edge of my die, and that sits very nicely right in the middle of the metal frame. So I've got the raised cutting edge and I've got the metal frame. And the fact it's in the middle is quite important because that means there's even pressure on either side. Okay. If it's on the outside. You don't get such good foiling. If it's on the inside, you're going to cut all your foiling off when you cut out. So that's my die. I need some foil. Now I'm sure you don't want to watch me cut up, cut foil out again. So uh, I am going to pause the camera, get my foil ready. Okay, so I've got my foil ready. So exactly the same as I did with the the other die. Well, I've got my topper that I'm going to foil. And the fact I've cut the middle out means I can actually see where the words are and make sure I'm in the right place. And then I'm going to put my die this time cutting side up. Okay. Make sure my text isn't leaning over to one side. Okay, there's that. And then I 
need some more tape. There we are, so that tape down, and then I can put it on the go press. Just move this out of the way a minute. So this goes on the go press differently to when I'm using a cut foil embossed die. The, the rule is the cutting edge is always facing upwards. So with this die, I had my card on top like this and the cutting edge was up and it was heating through the die in, into the, the foiling edge and then being cut. This one, I'm just using the pressure of the back of the die so the cutting edge goes up, which means the card is down on the metal plate and the heat will come through and heat everything up from below. OK, so I'm going to add my thin metal shim and close my lid and put it back on the base so everything warms up. I'm going to put my storage folder back on top to hold that lid down. Okay, and again, it's not that it's too thick, it's just that the metal plates have got a bit of spring in them and they want to push the plastic lid upwards. So let's have a look at what else I did earlier. So here's one I did earlier in exactly the same way. And this is the die I did it with. So I had my foil, I had it taped down. I did this and I took it out the go press and I had a peep under a corner and it wasn't properly foiled. So I turned it round and I put it back in the go press and I let it heat some more. And then I rolled it again. And then eventually all the way around was foiled. Okay, so now I need to cut it out. So all you do is lay the die on top and line it up with the foiling. So you can only do this with symmetrical dies. If you've got something that's a really strange shape, it doesn't work. Only with dies where when you flip them one way or the other, it's exactly the same shape. Okay, they can have, you know, it can be a rectangle. Um, sometimes dies have a slightly different shape one side to the other, but usually you can turn them round you can either turn them one way or the other. You can't necessarily rotate them. So just get that lined up. I'm just going to turn the die. I don't think this is completely symmetrical. It's not quite matching. So let's just try around that way. I think that's better. I tape it in place in at least two places so really it really mustn't move when I'm die cutting okay and then I'm going to die cut that so just bear with me a minute okay so I've die cut oops, there you are, it's fallen out the die cut so I've just die cut that so I've got a forward edge around that or I could have used a, a cut for an embossed die on some card, done that. I've got some of the circular pre-cut ones that I, I've done a circle from. This was a piece of the backing paper from the kit. So you could, you could put these together in any combination really. And do that kind of style of thing. Okay, so lots and lots of possibilities. Okay, so let me roll this through because that's had plenty of time to warm up now while I've been doing all that. Okay, so I'm going to take this off the top. And roll it through. Go 
that was upwards again. metal shim just slide that off now put this back on the base to stay warm and then I'm gonna have a peep under the edges now you have to be quite careful because the die cuts through your tape so perhaps I'm just gonna put an extra piece of tape on I'm gonna use a piece from here Make sure this is held down while I have a look. There's a fresh piece of tape that hasn't been cut. And then I can have a look under this end. Just gently lift my foil and have a peep. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? Right, so I've got this out of the go press. I've just put a fresh piece of tape over here. Because these pieces have been cut through so they're not really holding the die down anymore so i've just put an extra piece over there and then i'm just going to have a peep under this edge to see whether or not the foiling has worked don't know if you can see that on the camera or you just about and that looks fine i'm going to check the other end as well sometimes one end works better than the other yep that looks fine so now i've had a peep without moving everything i can take my tape off If it hadn't foiled then you heat it some more and you roll it some more you should feel a, a resistance as you as you roll it so it, it's one of those things if you're sure you've heated it for long enough and before you've rolled it through um, then you might want to add an extra card shim under, underneath your metal plate okay putting it on top doesn't work because you just cut into them Okay, so there we have forward oval. And of course, if that was um, in another situation, you, you don't necessarily have to cut it out, but I am going to because the, the shapes of the ovals don't match. Okay, so let, okay. In fact, I'll do that in a minute. Let me get the next piece of foiling ready first, because then it can be heating up while I'm cutting out. Okay, so I've done that. What I thought would be good to do is to do one of the larger cut foil and embossed dies so you can see how the two kind of ways of working work together. So I'm going to work with this one okay because that will fit nicely over there as a topper as well so that will give us another layer or I can work the circle with it. But let's have a look. Okay, and what am I going to fall onto? Now these kits have come with some really lovely a lesson card and in fact I've got two different kits here and I don't know which piece of card is for what but I'm thinking I'm going to go with the dark one okay so I'm just going to cut a piece of card roughly to size a bit of, bit of space around the edge So I've got that 
that's about the right size. I need a piece of foil. Don't think that's no, that one's not wide enough. I'm going to use this one. And I am going to use my card here just to make sure I cut it straight. It keeps trying to curl up. use that to mark a line on my foil and I like to use sharp scissors to cut my foil a nice big pair of scissors helps me cut straight and then the same as before I'm going to trim out the inside of my foil don't really need to worry about the outside I'll just trim the corners off so I've got somewhere to tape down. So just bear with me while I do that. Okay, so I've cut my foil out. Let's put my knife away. out for that because one side it dips out the other side it dips in so make sure you get your foils the right way around after you've trimmed it right and some tape and it, it's just to hold things in place while I turn it upside down on the go press okay I've got another piece there there we are, so one more. It's not really in space on the other corner. Okay. So, actually I've got that. I'm just going to move that over a little bit. Let's get the go press over and start that warming up. Okay, so this is a cut foil and embossed die. So it wants to go on my metal plate, the die side down and the card on top. It's also got a very long, very straight edge with lots of detail on it. So I am just going to offset it very slightly so it doesn't hit that hard edge all in one go just like you would with an intricate die okay I'm going to add my metal shim in fact I'm also going to add an extra piece of card so just bear with me a minute while I find some spare card you're gonna put a so I don't need to worry about exactly where the die is I'm gonna use a, a whole sheet and that, that is sacrificial, but it does get used in the end. It's quite often I make my top for a double layer. So that goes on there. The lid goes down. Just going to move that one forward a bit. That's it. There we are. Tuck, that in, the, tuck, it, tuck in the sides. Make sure I haven't got any foil on my electrical connector. And then slide it back in. And I'm going to put my storage folder on top so that my hands are free. Okay, so I've done that and I was going to die cut. That's what I was going to do, wasn't it? So I fold this one so I can just put the die on here. And you do have to line it up quite carefully. Quite often I start taping down and then I'll turn it round 
realise I've, I've gone to one side or the other or too far up or too far down. The oval sometimes it's it's not not quite quite the right rotation. So tape it there and then I'm gonna turn it round and kind of look from the other way up. Because if you've only one side taped it can move a bit so if it's not quite right I can correct it. And when it's in the right place, you can't see your foiling, okay? So if you see it peeping out anywhere, unless the, unless the die is lifting up like that. But if the die is pressed down, you shouldn't be able to see any foiling. So let's just die cut that. So now this is just a normal die, so it just goes through the die cutting machine as normal. See what we've got. So let's push that out. And as you can see, that's for the edge. So it's get the right one. Sorry. No, that's not that's the one we did. So it's a slightly different effect to what you get with the cut falling embossed dies. Still very attractive okay so that's those so I keep my pieces of tape and of course it doesn't have to be a pre-printed topper this could just be a piece of plain card that you're doing some stamping on or a section of a um, paper pad. So there's, there's, there are so many possibilities with this. Right, so that's had, a, had time to warm up. Let's roll it through the die cutting machine. I'll just turn the camera. I'd like you to see me die cutting so you can see what kind of resistance I'm getting. So I'm expecting this to be quite tight, because that's a big die, and I've got an extra layer of card as well. So I can feel that resistance, there we are, but I can still roll smoothly. I have, I'm still sitting down, I'm still rolling this at arm's length, I haven't had to really kind of stand over the machine and force it through. Bring it back. Okay, and then I'm going to turn my die through 90 degrees. Okay, which is a quarter turn. Okay, now that oh, I should have trimmed that piece of card, shouldn't I? So I'm just going to do that now. put another piece on but it won't matter too much for me because I've got a wide die cutting machine but it would for you so your extra piece of card it's a good idea to trim it to the same size as your die it's all kind of locked together so I'm gonna go quarter turn minding my fingers because it's all quite hot so that would be there. I want it to be about there. Yeah. So it's hitting these two corners first. Let me bring this camera around. 
I don't know if you can see here, but those two corners are cut and when I've turned and these two haven't. So I'm going to turn it now so it's hitting these two corners first. I won't turn it too much, otherwise I shall be I shall have bits that aren't heating. Okay. And I've got some card sticking out the side because I didn't cut this piece of card to size first. But I've got a wide die cutting machine, so that's okay for me. But this is going to need to warm up again. So back onto the base, and I'm going to put my die storage back on top. There we are. So that'll be that one. And I thought I'd do one of the larger ovals to go with this. Can you see me? Yeah, <laughs> around there. So, what would be a nice size, do you think? Maybe that size, a nice big mat for it. Or we could just go to the next size up. Maybe just the next size up. Yeah. Okay, will that fit in there? Oh, it will. So that's good. So let's do one of these as well. And have I got a piece of four the right size anyway here? No. Okay. So some foil. Bear with me a minute while I sort the foil out. Okay, so I've cut my foil and I'll take that one down ready to go. So now I can do my extra roll on the one that we left warming up. So that's my cut foil and embossed die. Just realised I've got something on my roller. Piece of foil. Can't see me, can you? So there we are. There's the die cutting machine. Right, so I'm just rolling this through. It's actually the same as before. have a look so oh right okay so oops, my extra piece of card has got stuck to my thin metal shim hasn't quite cut all the way through oh yeah it has cut all the way through so that's good and I can see on this that I've got a good emboss all the way around okay I shall hold that up in a minute I'm just going to slide it off for now and so it can be warming up, I'm going to put this one on. So this is how you, you kind of don't waste time so much when you're waiting for things to warm up. There's always something needs to be done. Snap that on. Get them to stay still while I close it. I'm going to put my die folder back on top. Okay, so there we are. The die fold, the die storage folder is just holding the lid pressed down. So let's have a look at this. I don't want this to fall apart without you seeing the back. So let me see if I can get this to focus on the back properly. You can see that, but you can see at the back. Hey, yeah, that's it. Okay, focus there. That's better. You can see 
the emboss has come through. Okay, so that it makes me quite hopeful that my foiling will be good. If you can't see the impression on the back, then it probably hasn't foiled either. So let's have a look. Okay, so the foil is nicely stuck down. Just release it from the die, from the edge here, because it, it's cut through the foil as well. There we are, so that's waste. Put my die to one side as well. Okay, so let's get this to release. Sometimes you just kind of rub over it. It will. Oh, there we are. Just need to get an edge started. Oh, no. I've had too much pressure here. I've got some overfoiling. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is brush this with a, 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 a soft brush. Because sometimes overfoiling isn't really attached to the card, it's just attached to the bit of foil next to it that's attached to the card. So sometimes some of it comes off then. Okay, so I didn't need the extra card chip. That would have foiled fine without that. I might redo that in a minute. Okay. But I'm going to get a rubber. Now I've got a, what's called a sand eraser. It's an ink rubber. And if I keep it flat, I can just go over some of the, these areas and remove some of the extra foil. It shouldn't be on the raised areas. There's quite a lot on here. I don't know if I will move enough of it to be happy with it. But very gently, don't use a lot of pressure. You can always go over a second time, but if you press too hard, you'll start taking off the foiling that you do want. Sometimes if going from one direction doesn't take the foil off, going from another will. So it's just a matter of going round, keeping the rubber flat. And because the, the foiling I do want is pressed into the cardstock, then that isn't rubbed away as so long as I keep the rubber flat. Okay, so I've done 
for the main patterned area. And then I've got some areas on the inside here. And they're a bit more stubborn. So I shall probably do another one of these in a minute. So, let's get a bit more for these sides. Trouble is, I'm a perfectionist. Every time I move it, I see a bit more. Okay, let me roll through what I've got heating up there and then we'll have another look at this. So I'm just gonna move the camera around. There we are. Let's have a look at this one. Now, don't forget to untape your dies from your cardstock. I do know people who have thrown away parts of nesting sets because they've had them taped down to die cut them and then forgotten to take them off their card before they've tidied up. So make sure you retrieve your dies. I've got some overfoiling on this one as well. Now, Couture Creations, let's just move this out of the way, have bought out a, a tool called a Creative Detailer. which is basically a battery-operated eraser that's quite good for these things. Let me just get it. Right. Okay. It, I've got the sort of thick ending but it does come with a finer one as well okay and you can you just turn it on and it just spins the rubber so it's not going to hurt your hands it's just a, a spinning rubber and you can just take your overfoiling and remove it but you can have a very light touch because it can also damage the surface of your card and some overfoiling comes off more easily than others. Okay, if it's a few little spots, usually it comes away quite easily. Sometimes if it's larger areas, it doesn't. not going to come off so to be honest what I would need to do there is do that again trim the foil more closely to the die and probably take out one of my card shims and see if it'll work with less pressure but let's see how we can combine this with what we've already got so I've got a topper here And it pretty much covers up where the overfoiling was. Okay, let's get that to focus. I'm just going to turn the camera around. Oops. Turn the camera around a bit more. That's better. So those two could go together really nicely, and that layer. It almost covers where that overfoiling was. So I'd probably use that stick of flower or butterfly over that spot. Okay, so that's that option. Or I could use 
my oval and that's slightly larger so that does cover up where the overfoiling went okay and if I look at my frame here and it is a case of getting to know your, your cardstock and your dies so I would do this again and as I say not have that extra card shimming I don't think that really needed it but then look at how I could use it so I could add that as a layer I know I've got my overfoiling there but actually it just about covers it add in the circle and use it that way okay so it's like there are so many possibilities um, maybe go over that way so do that way and do those as one of those or that way as I say so many possibilities um, there's just there's too many for me to cover so it's a matter of experimenting really so as I say beginners part three maybe not such no, maybe not so much beginners as now you're getting some more experience and starting to experiment but as you can see different results with different cards I'm going to redo this I'm going to turn the pause the, the, the recording and redo this so I can show you at the end um, with a better result because I do want you to see that it can be done but it doesn't always work first time most of the most of the time things do work for me first time now because I've had a lot of experience and practice but there's no shortcut for getting that experience um, you, you have to as I say work with different types of card and paper different foils different dies different cut and foil dies different sizes of die and you will get to know your equipment your die cutting machine and what works okay I can only point you in the right direction so bear with me and I'll redo this this last square one for you okay so the second attempt at this square frame there's now a time to, to warm up so let's rub it through So this time I haven't put the extra layer of card in, but I am going to turn it to 90 degrees. Okay, and then I'm going to, it shouldn't, shouldn't have lost much heat while I was doing that. So I am just going to roll it again. So when I said I was turning it through 90 degrees, I've literally lifted this and it was there and it's there and I've just turned it through a quarter of a turn so it's there, put this back on and rolled straight away. So let's see what we've got. So this time, let me show you the back of it before I separate it. I can see a bit of an emboss on the back. 
I'll hold this right up the camera. Should I focus on it? I can get that's it. There's a one on the back. There's a you can see a bit of an emboss through the back, but not like it was on the previous one. So let's just take the tape off. Cut through my foil. No doubt, cut through my card as well. There we are. Oh, it's a lot easier to get off this time. There we are. So there's a little bit of overfoiling around the very edges um, and that really is easy to move and doesn't doesn't notice when you've removed it. So again the creative detailer I just come around these edges very gently. And if I can't get into the, the corners I can put the smaller end in. Let me show you that. Ooh. My bits in a plastic box. Oops. So to change this over, you literally just pull it out, and I can I can carry on using that another time. And then I need a holder for the the smaller size. There we are. Nothing that's sticking out of it. Just push it in as far as you can push it, and that's good to go. And I can just, as I say, work my way around the edge fairly quickly. And just remove the foiling that's on that very edge. Now, some people think it's supposed to foil that edge, and it isn't, that is just a cut line, so it won't be even foiling. The foiling is inside the edge of the cut line. And it's the the sunken areas that are foiled, not the raised ones. You see this is fairly quick to do. Just around the outside. Just give that a brush off. It's certainly much nicer foiling than the, the first attempt. Okay, so let's get our bits and pieces that went with that. So I've got that that I could put over. So I could go that way, or it could go at an angle. Okay, I've got my circle that go inside with my mat and I've got that one. Oh I could not have that extra layer and just put my circle in. Okay. Lot or I could put it and have it as a di as a diamond. Oh, I've got bits from my rubbings out on here. I could put 
put it that way. Okay. I could probably do that as well. And layer it up that way. Oh, the camera's not focusing very well. So, as I say, so many possibilities. Um, it's, yeah. Some card, some toppers. As I say, this could be a plain piece of card that I've stamped and coloured or just stamped a sentiment on. Or, you know, even, you know, heat embossed a sentiment on and put it in silver or gold or whatever colour embossing powder you've got. So there we are. So that's foiled frames, I think I will call this one. Foiled frames, foiled edges, using either cut foil and embossed dies, which are a wonderful thing. You, you know, this, you couldn't do this with a die. Absolutely not. But then when you want to find the right size to cut out something that's already been pre-printed, then this is great. It's also great if you've got um, card making CDs, um, that kind of thing, for creating some really special looking toppers from those. Okay, thank you for watching.